BlizzPro's coverage of BlizzCon 2016 is brought to you by Steel Series. We are esports. All right, welcome back to our coverage of BlizzCon 2016. I'm uh, this is a uh, BlizzPro.com sponsored by Steel Series, and I have Adam Rosen and Aka Face here to talk about the Heroes of the Dorm documentary. We're really excited about it. They gave us a little bit of a sneak peek of it, but we're gonna we're asking. Awesome just about the documentary. Awesome. Adam, I want to start with you. What was the idea, just the, the whole idea about making this documentary? Sure, so when we looked at it, we started actually making the film about a year ago. And when we started making it, one of the ideas that we really wanted to explore was to think about the evolution of esports. Obviously, esports, um, if you've been watching it over the past few years, seems to keep growing and growing and growing. And um, it's growing within the, you know, the scene of gamers, but we think there's a big opportunity for people who don't really follow esports today to really understand what it's all about. So one of the things that we wanted to do was to really break down the competition on a human level and to show that at the end of the day, what drives these athletes and these teams to compete within esports at Heroes of the Dorm and really any other esport in the world is really the same thing that drives traditional athletes in other sports, right? It's it's the drive to compete, it's the drive to connect, it's the, the drive to be a part of something larger than themselves and to give it their all and see what happens. So that's really one of the fundamental reasons why we started looking at the film. But as we started um, following the players and following the storylines, we found that, wow, there's actually a huge amount there that I'm not going to spoil anything too much, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a huge yeah. amount there that I think there's room to explore. And I think with Heroes of the Dorm documentary, A New Hero, we've had a really cool opportunity to be able to shine light on those things in ways that have never been done before. Yeah, so what was the idea around, kind of spoil a little bit, but uh, yeah, sure. interviewing some of the celebrities uh, who are kind of starting to really get involved in esports, people like Mark Cuban, Rick Fox, et cetera. What, what was the, the decision behind that, I guess, the, the process on getting those people on board to talk about Heroes of the Dorm? Yeah, one of the things we wanted to do with the film was to make it approachable. We wanted to be able to um, take Heroes of the Dorm and this concept of esports, and we wanted to be able to show it to people in a way where they would easily understand it, right? And um, when we look back at gaming, I think gaming for a while had a really negative connotation, right? There was a stigma around it. Oh, you're a gamer, so you're you know playing games in your basement, and um, there's a whole slew of stigmas that go around with it. But what we've seen with um, our esports competition and the athletes is that it's actually the complete opposite. So um, one of the things that we thought would be a really cool idea is to take um, a lot of these, these guys who we know um, love and are involved with traditional sports and have them talk a little bit about what their thought process is around esports as well. Um, these are guys that we're, you know, we've worked with in various capacities before, and it's really um, refreshing also to see the, their perspectives because I think that it mirrors a lot of what we on the inside are seeing. All right, uh, Akapace, uh, for you, the, the kind of the central theme of the documentary is really about uh, parental support for the players here. What, can you tell us a little bit about y your parents and how they supported you throughout this tournament, or, or maybe not? Um, well, at first, like, playing games and stuff, it's like you're wasting your time and, like, you should be studying and, like, doing something productive. But then it was like, oh, I'm in this tournament, like, as I was going through the, like, the rounds and everything. Uh, eventually when I hit like the round of four it was like oh oh you're gonna be on TV oh here's the plane ticket it was like whoa I get to watch you on TV like you're playing uh, for your college tuition they started getting really into it then so obviously the amount of hype as you progressed through the bracket and started becoming more and more successful and then the favorite and all that what was it like after all that attention grew when you got back to campus after dorm concluded what was the reception like when you got back home um, it was really great. Like, ASU was really supportive in general. And we had, like, a signing at a baseball game and stuff. And there was just, like, a long line. Like, it was actually, it was pretty insane. It was really overwhelming. Like, I didn't expect that much support. Yeah, that's great. So, collegiate esports kind of on a, a broad level. Um, just how important is that to you? You, obviously, having founded TESPA <laughs> and, and Blizzard, just, just kind of have a mission statement on like wh what does this mean for esports being able to breed from that i mean the the big kind of uh glory story would be fan i would say coming yeah. from the first heroes of the dorm to winning blizzcon last year yeah. 
Yeah, so collegiate esports to us is really important because when we look at the culture around sports in our world, I think a lot of it has to do with how integrated um, students, high schoolers, college students, et cetera, alumni are in their local teams. And when we look at esports, specifically collegiate esports, I think it gives us a lot of really awesome opportunities to create these storylines um, that are persistent over multiple years. Um, so that's one of the really interesting things for us is we find that collegiate esports, it's even if you're not the biggest gamer in the world, is something that's pretty relatable and it's something that a lot of people um, can use to get their first glimpse into what competitive gaming is and hopefully fall in love from there. Um, when we first started TESPA, you mentioned TESPA, um, several years back, um, gaming was still kind of looked down upon. The idea of a collegiate esport, the idea behind the university supporting their team was completely unheard of, right? It was ludicrous. Why would anyone do that? You're wasting your time. Um, it's completely changed. It's night and day now. Now, um, TESPA actually has over 190 chapters across North America. And what we see from these students who are in their areas, each hosting really epic events and building communities is that their universities are starting to get really supportive. And to us, that's a clear sign that that um, the you know, uh, culture is starting to shift a little bit, and we're really happy to be at the forefront of that. From a player's perspective, Aki, can you talk about the fact that you're playing an event to pay for your college education, but in order to do your best, you almost have to sort of put your education on hold to a certain extent to be able to devote the time you need to. Can you talk about how you balance that kind of thing? It's just really hard. Like, they say, you can pick between a social life, like education, and like gaming, and you can only pick like two of them. And it's like, it's just so hard to balance in general and like do your absolute best because it's just so many hours you have to put in, you know? It's just a lot about balancing it. Like, yeah. What kind of advice would you give the new dorm players going forward to help them with the transition? You know, there's gonna be such a divided line now between HGC and dorms. There won't be that overlap there was last year where you can have pro players playing in both. So for the truly amateurs that will be going forward, what advice would you give them? Do your best to manage your time properly. Like, that's all it is, you know? Like, using your time really efficiently. So back to the first dorm, you were a part of that and you lost to to Cal Berkeley how how did you fight back and be able to regain your composure in the 2016 season um oh sorry uh <laughs> well like in 2015 it's like the confetti is all coming down on us like after the loss that's like the worst feeling possible and it's just like we really wanted to come back strong like do absolutely, we, absolutely everything we possibly could. Like we had pages and pages and pages of notes, like draft scenarios, everything. Like we knew, we knew the final four teams like inside and out, and we just wanted to be super prepared, and do anything we could possible to win. So in this event, you guys were clearly the favorites, and you almost took on a villain role. Can you describe that feeling when you took down the core, when the confetti launches? Was it relief? Was it joy? You know, what was that feeling when you knew you'd finally accomplished what you've been working on for years? It was probably all of the above, you know? It was like, this is what we worked so hard for and we finally got it. I don't think it hit us like right there, like right when we won. It was like afterwards, it was like, we did it, you know? Like we won this. A lot of athletes talk about, they almost remember the losses more than they remember the victories. So you were on the, the side where you're watching the other team celebrate. In the documentary, we see uh, dark blaze going through that where you guys are celebrating and they're back behind stage just feeling that you know when you look back on the year that you lost and the year that you won you know how do what is like uh, I guess what sticks with you more I mean the losses stick with you forever for sure like I can remember like all my losses you know like the really like big ones but you you feel worse after a loss, then you feel good from winning. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Okay. So Adam, where does TESPA go from here? You talked about how eSports is growing by leaps and bounds. TESPA is also doing the same thing. So what's next for TESPA? Obviously more dorms, but what else can we look forward to? 
Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we're super interested to do as we're looking forward is really taking a broader look at the collegiate esports landscape and thinking about things that we can do to level it up. Of course, Heroes of the Dorm is awesome, right? It's an it's event with a league leading up to it, but we think there's an opportunity to take that to the next level. I think what um, we, this semester even, we, we released for the first time Tespa Collegiate Series, which is a format where we challenge teams at various universities to come together, feel their very best team of players and fight against the best players from other universities and one of the cool things about that is we're starting to really engage the universities. We're seeing a lot more support for the teams. We're seeing the teams uh, celebrated and getting support in ways that allow them to compete on levels that we've never seen before. Um, when we're looking forward, uh, we, we want to continue to uh, have long form leagues for multiple games, right? When we look at sports, there's, there's football, there's basketball, there's a ton of choices, right? And each of those have communities which rally behind them. We think we have the same opportunity in esports. And and to do that, we're going to, as we look forward, focus on consistency and stability. So, for example, um, when we launch leagues and we introduce new games to TESPA Collegiate Series, one of the things that's really important to us is to be able to make commitments to those games for multiple years. We know that, for example, as universities are looking at supporting teams like, like ASU, right, we want to we think it's really important to give universities and to give these communities a uh, level of expectation in terms of here's what formats look like moving forward. Here is, um, you, there's a guarantee that this league will be around for the next couple years, right? So that um, there's, there's less worry about the risk of getting involved and helping their team out in a more fundamental way. So I would say that there's a very emotional moment in the documentary that it kind of is the apex of it. Um, being there myself and seeing that was pretty incredible but i mean how how do you ch i mean the kind of choice makes its own choice there mm -hmm. um but just were you expecting that to happen on the stage just that raw emotion from shot there well uh no absolutely not i think it doesn't surprise me, right, looking back that um, shot in the documentary, he falls to his feet, right, and he's just overwhelmed with happiness. I think that it's not something that should surprise us, right, because the level of emotion, the level of investment that these players are putting in, these, um, I mean, these players are training for, you know, months before the competition, right, putting together practice schedules, studying their opponents, putting together um, different strategic scenarios to follow through, and there's, I, I can only imagine what it's like to be in that situation and to to have that emotion just fully consume you and um, I think it's something that's really special to be honest I think that um, we saw a little bit of that the year before in Heroes of the Dorm as well where the um, winning team one of the players mothers ran up on stage and hugged him and um, that sort of thing I think happens in sports right it happens when you have this ecosystem where people are putting in their all and the fan bases behind it are just as invested as the players who are playing yeah, most definitely. And the other thing that I guess it surprised me a little bit is, is both the Heroes of the Dorm completely packed out. You had to stop letting people in, uh, and obviously they were broadcast on ESPN. Yep. Um, how did that come to pass, and like just how much uh, does that help the collegiate esports scene, having it on something like ESPN? Yeah, I think absolutely it does. And I think, honestly, it helps all of esports. One of the big things that um, we look to do with Heroes of the Dorm is to really take esports and expose it to new audiences that haven't really seen it before. I really strongly believe, and we've seen this firsthand through doing programs like Heroes of the Dorm, that there are people out there who love the idea of competition, right? And love the, the concept of connecting with others over following their favorite teams and living vicariously through them. And um, we know that they'll fall in love with esports if it's produced mm -hmm. and presented in the right way. And that's actually one of the great opportunities we had with the event and the program as a whole was to take take esports and really think about what it is that drives us to care, the storylines, the the really the the element of these athletes coming together and giving something their all. And we were able to really package that together into something that I think was really compelling to hardcore fans and first time viewers alike. So if students are excited about esports and want to get involved in TESPA, how can they do that? 
Great question. So students who want to get involved can go to tespa.org. Uh, we have 190 chapters now across North America, and students can search for their university and sign up to become a member there. And if there is no chapter there yet, and they're interested in taking a leadership role on their campus, they can apply to become a chapter on campus. I think each of the communities is game agnostic, right? So they're wel welcome students regardless of the games that they're okay. playing at the time. And uh, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is really having that central home for gamers on every campus, where okay. regardless of your interest, regardless of your background, you can come together and be welcomed and, you know, open arms. Can you tell us about a little bit what you're doing here at BlizzCon? Like the setup you have upstairs is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, personally, uh, from my perspective, I'm also the esports lead for BlizzCon. So um, we are this year, uh, we have four different stages inside the convention hall where we're having five different tournaments. We have StarCraft II in the arena, which is the world championships, right? WCS finals, where we'll have for the first time three players um, go against, or there's eight players obviously, but we've had a huge amount of um, success from non-Korean players actually making it to the finals. So there's a lot of interest around that. Huge prize pools on the line, amazing stage, beautiful production store. We also have Hearthstone, the global finals for Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, and World of Warcraft. And additionally, for the first time ever, we have an Overwatch arena where we'll be having the finals of the Overwatch World Cup, um, which takes essentially 16 country-based teams and pits them together. Um, we've been broadcasting for the past week, and this weekend is sure to impress. It's going to be awesome. Now, Aka, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You're our expert player. We've got Heroes Esport coming up here. Who's going to be the winner? And you can't say MVP <laughs> Black. Oh, my God. Wait, so, so you want me to lie? Wait a minute. Um, denial. I believe in denial, you know. Okay, nice. <laughs> so I just wanted to leave it open for you. Uh, any closing thoughts on this documentary and just what, what it means to you to get this out the door so that people can see this? Yeah, so like I said, we've been working on this film for over a year, and to see it to come together is something that's really special. I think that um, when we set out to create this, one of the things that we really wanted to do was to be able to make a film that a gamer, regardless of you know where they are in the world, is able to show to their friends and their parents and their uh, coworkers or teachers who don't really get it, right, and don't understand why they're spending so much time, um, and to be able to really open that up and explain it. And I think we've been pretty successful in making that happen so I encourage um, everyone out there to give it a watch to explore and see um, what resonates with them because it's the the documentary is in so many ways has so many different um, really cool key messages in it um, that just naturally arise through watching athletes compete at their best and watching about what people really think about what esports is today and where it's going okay any final words on your dorm experience the documentary uh, it was just a great experience. Like, I'm curious to see if it if it comes back next year. How big it is, because dorm seems to be getting bigger every year. Yeah, and that's going to close out our coverage here for uh, this interview. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you at the, uh, on the convention floor. Stay tight. BlizzPro's coverage of BlizzCon 2016 is brought to you by SteelSeries. We are esports.